In 2020, Fujifilm released the X100V, which is now one of its iconic cameras. In order to advertise for this camera at the time, they decided to showcase some photographers using it in video advertisement on their YouTube channel. One of those videos was going to be at the start of one of street photography's biggest drama in recent times, and the photographer featured in it was no other than Tatsuo Suzuki, the subject of today's Photographers in Focus episode. Some of you might already be aware of this story since it made a lot of noise at the time, but I will still explain it for those of you that haven't heard of it uh, already. So, as I have told you before, Fujifilm released videos uh, featuring photographers using the X100V, and in one of those videos, Tatsuo Suzuki was showcased using it. Uh, since he's a street photographer and his style is going quite close to people to get a close-up of them, some cancel culture adepts were not very happy with what they saw in this video. The video was showing uh, Tatsuo Suzuki shooting in a way that he is used to do, which is going quite close to people because he likes to shoot people from up close, as we will see it later. In order to get those shots, it's true that sometimes he's a bit maybe intrusive, or even aggressive as some have said, and this started a bit of a drama because some people were uh, pressing Fujifilm to delete this video. Fujifilm decided to delete the video that was the source of those bad comments. They then took it a bit further by uh, firing uh, Tatsuo Suzuki, which was a Fujifilm ambassador at the time. And yes, you heard that right, Fujifilm fired one of their photographers for a video that they themselves organized and published. I don't want to get too deep into this debate, but I feel that we can all agree with the fact that Fujifilm should have either uh, not associated themselves with a photographer whose values were not aligned with their values, or that they should have tried to defend him and to explain why he was shooting like that and what he was trying to achieve by shooting like that. Even though Suzuki was affected by the withdrawal of this video, this little drama did not stop him from shooting. And he actually provided an explanation with regards to the drama that followed the publication of his video. He explained the following. I would say that the video does not really capture my natural process, my usual process. When I take pictures, I have a lot of respect for my subjects. The reaction on Fujifilm's part was a little bit strict, I felt. I was kind of disappointed that they went to that level, but it is what it is. I don't have a critic of them for making that decision. It's an ordinary thing that happens in the course of them choosing what they want for their advertisements. So I want to make it clear that there is no ongoing bad blood and controversy between me and Fujifilm. Now that we have cleared that bit, we can focus on Suzuki's work. But before that, I will quickly present him. Suzuki was born in 1965 in Tokyo, but never really settled there due to his father's job. In the 80s, he went back to Tokyo to attend college. However, the city never really felt home to him. And uh, he even states the following when discussing Tokyo. Although I currently live there, it is not my hometown. I feel as if I'm floating on the street. At this period of time, uh, Suzuki was into beat rock and punk rock and had no specific interest about photography. It's only around 2008 that he started shooting. He got into photography while he was working in the sales department of an IT company. He felt like he had a very little amount of leisure time and he thought that photography could be a good way to spend the few time that he has. He only took one year of uh, photography lessons and other than that he is fully self-taught. Since 2013, he started to gain more and more traction uh, by winning some awards and prizes. And in 2017, he created Void Tokyo, which is a street photography collective that produces a magazine about street pho photography in Tokyo. In 2020, uh, Tatsuo made probably one of the biggest accomplishments in his life when he was published by Steidl. They helped him create his only book to this date, which is called Friction. Tokyo Street, and I propose to you that we will discuss this work right now. When explaining the name of this project, Suzuki states the following. These pictures were taken between 2018 and 2019, and the theme of this, the book is friction, which has this connotation of discord or strife, and that's something that I really wanted to capture as the reflection of the feeling of the, these places where I shoot. It's also sort of a reflection of my attitude as I'm doing the photography. The places I find most compelling are those that have this feeling almost like a slum, sort of back alleys, places that are out of way, which I think capture that essence really well. This focus on friction is quite interesting because he's also purposefully creating friction by uh, using the method that he uses, by going close to up to people, he's creating that tension and that, uh, that feeling of friction that we can see when we look at his work. 
If we had to categorize Suzuki's work, uh, I would say that he belongs to uh, the impressionist uh, movement because of the fact that he's not trying to establish a perfect reproduction of reality when he shoots. He's more trying to make us feel the way he felt uh, at a specific moment looking at a specific scene. And I think that uh, Suzuki is quite aware of that because he states the following. When I take pictures, I want to transport the viewer to that place. I want them to feel emotionally what it was like to be walking around the streets at that time. This impression is, is mainly delivered thanks to the mastery of some techniques, such as the use of long exposure and flash combined, which helps to freeze the subject and at the same time creates a very chaotic background, which also insists on that uh, friction that Tatsuo is trying to illustrate with his images. Another element that Suzuki frequently uses and that contributes to that impressionism aspect is long exposures. Um, he uses them quite a lot and it often helps to illustrate uh, that friction and it helps to illustrate that contrast between the street that is uh, static and the people that are like a constant flow in the city of Tokyo. He's also very good at using uh, reference reflections to compose very powerful images and the use of those reflections plays a very important role in conveying uh, emotions such as the tension and the sensation of chaos that we can uh, feel when we are looking at Suzuki's pictures. Here it's hard for me not to compare Suzuki with the Provoke movement uh, which was active in Japan uh, during the 60s and who are likely to be uh, one of Suzuki's inspirations. Here I don't want to get into a too detailed description about the Provoke movement, but the characteristic about this movement that I can see in Suzuki's work is the fact that they were precursors in showing that photography could have more characteristics and potentials uh, than the simple descriptive use of uh, photographic images. This descriptive use of photographic images is now just one use of photography that you can do, uh, but at the time it was the, the, the main uh, thing that photography was used for. And I think that their images share a lot of similarities with the ones that uh, Suzuki is shooting. Uh, the first one is that they would uh, also belong to impressionists. They are also photographers that are more about sharing a feeling that someone felt at a certain moment rather than making a reproduction of reality. Another similarity that I can see with Suzuki's work is that they are black and white images and, and they are kind of at odds with what we could expect uh, from maybe the stereotypical view that we have of Japan. So these images from the Provoke Movement photographers are also very good at conveying this emotion of tension and of maybe of friction, which is the main thing that uh, Suzuki is trying to do with his work. And the last similarity that I can see is uh, that the Provoke photographers and especially Daido Moriyama were used to get very close to people when doing uh, street photography. And that's one of the main characteristics of uh, Suzuki's work as we have seen it with the images that I have shown you. Another photographer that would obviously be compared with Suzuki is Bruce Gilden. He's also known for his very aggressive behavior when shooting in the streets. The difference is the fact that uh, Gilden is using the flash all the time. This is his thing, taking pictures of people very close with a flash. Suzuki uses the flash as well, but in a much more limited manner. So even though both photographers are getting very close to their subjects, I feel like Suzuki is a bit more versatile in his approach, where Gildon is more mechanic and doing always the same kind of approaches, which leads to very interesting shots as well, but maybe with a narrower diversity than the works of uh, Suzuki. Another thing that I can see is uh, that maybe uh, Suzuki is also evolving like Gildon is, because the older Gildon got, uh, the more his images had a social commentary uh, aspect to them. He took a lot of pictures of people that are at the margins of society in order to humanize them. Uh, this is something that Tatsuo Suzuki is not doing uh, with the same intensity as Gildon, but we can still see some images that are emerging from Suzuki's work and that clearly have uh, a social commentary aspect as well. Uh, one of the examples uh, is this image where you can clearly see uh, Suzuki underlining uh, the problem of inequalities uh, in Japan. So we can see on this image, for example, that there is a homeless guy uh, close to someone with a shirt, smoking a cigarette and looking like he, he has at least he has a job and probably maybe a well-paying one. Another image uh, that I thought might have some kind of a social commentary that could be made when looking at it uh, is this one. Uh, it could be about uh, vanity. We can see this girl uh, looking at the mirror, making sure that she looks alright. 
And there are also other images uh, from Suzuki that are evoking this social commentary, but they sometimes feel a bit uh, accidental, where Gildon is really focusing on making a, a social commentary. Of course, there are many other photographers that could be named when trying to uh, regroup the influences uh, of uh, Tatsuo Suzuki. Maybe Robert Kappa could be an influence with his famous saying that, uh, that said that if your photographs are not good enough, you are not close enough. They could also be uh, maybe Henri Cartier-Bresson, I think that Suzuki quoted him once. He said that the notion of uh, a decisive moment, uh, which is a notion that was described by uh, Cartier-Bresson, was very important to him. In another interview, uh, Suzuki also mentioned the great masters uh, of street photography as his inspirations. Uh, he mentioned the likes of uh, Robert Frank, Joseph Kudelka and uh, William Klein. But I think that if we had to keep in mind uh, two photographers that are producing images that are very similar to the ones that uh, Suzuki is producing, it would probably be uh, Daido Moriyama from the Provoke era uh, for the, the grittiness of his images and Bruce Gilden uh, for the simple fact that both of them are getting very close and then they have kind of a similar style of shooting. This focus on faces that uh, Suzuki shares with uh, Gilden is explained by Suzuki himself uh, for a very simple reason. I felt like for this collection, a focus on people was the most appropriate and maybe the best way to evoke emotions. Coming back to friction, my focus in this volume naturally came to people because they are the best personification of that friction I wanted to capture. It seems kind of self-evident that when you are trying to uh, provoke an emotion uh, in the viewer of your images, a focus on the face is always a good way to do so. Uh, humans are used uh, to feel emotions when they are uh, looking at each other's faces or to detect emotion in those faces. But I think that present in Suzuki by talking only about his very close-up shots uh, of people's faces uh, would be making him a bit of a disservice. So I have reserved this end of the video to quickly discuss uh, his other works. I won't discuss them in a very detailed manner because I don't want this video to last too long but uh, here are some of the images that he makes. He calls those images uh, fragments of daily life on his uh, Instagram page where he posts them and he describes them very well. Uh, those images are just shots that he makes when doing photography and they are not trying to provide uh, an aesthetic approach of Japan. He just shoots uh, whatever he wants uh, that's in front of him. And he does it again in an impressionist way. As we can see from the picture, uh, they are really not trying to reproduce how reality was, but they rather try to give us a hint on how reality felt like for Tatsuo. As we can see, a lot of these images are shot uh, during rainy weather, uh, and I think Suzuki stated once that uh, the rain was also participating in that tension and that friction that he likes to see in his uh, images. I hope this video helped you understand why I like Suzuki's work and why it's sometimes important to go beyond the first impression that you get when you see uh, a photographer's approach. Uh, when we see him work, maybe we don't want to like his work because we, we feel like he's being intrusive, aggressive and so on. But we must be honest and we must, I think we must admit that uh, his work, even if it might not be the taste of everyone, is quite consequent. He has been shooting between 1,000 and 2,000 images every time he goes out to shoot. He's a very prolific photographer and he has a body of work that uh, truly amazes me. But I'm interested to know what do you think about Suzuki's work and approach? Uh, let me know in the comments what you think about it. And also let me know if there is a photographer that you want me to talk about in the next episode of Photographers in Focus. Until then, if you have enjoyed this video, if you took some pleasure watching it, I will let you leave a like or a dislike if you haven't liked it. And uh, you are also free to subscribe if you want to see the, the next episodes that uh, I'm going to produce. See you in the next one.